was a greenhouse until the wind storm tore it up last winter. But this is my newest little project. Uh, I had a friend that had a greenhouse and was growing some beautiful citrus, so I decided I was going to copycat him and build me a place where I could grow navel oranges and pomelos. And if you look real, this is pomelos right here. Second year, second year of growth. These trees were planted like in June of, uh, of 21. And then this is what you get the second year. Wow. Uh, Bloom of Sweet grapefruit here. We've got all kind of stuff here. This is a flame grapefruit. So citrus, unlike a lot of other crops, you know, are, are fruity plants. You don't have to wait a lifetime to start getting fruit. These are flame grapefruits. Already starting to change color a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And hopefully next year, all this other stuff, um, we got Meyer lemons, not Meyer lemons, uh, Eureka lemons, Tango mandarins, red navel oranges, got one. I've always made the statement I never saw a citrus that I didn't like, but I finally found one. It's called a Sukari, and it's from Egypt, and it's like eating a bowl full of sugar. No no acidity at all. I mean, just eating super, super sweet. Really? They say kids love them, but I'm not a fan, so I'm probably going to take Sukari out and put something else in. <laughs> all right, we're going to walk on over there and take some a look at some of the things that we, uh, that we have growing on the farm here. Yeah. Okay, so I uh, just want to let you know the greenhouse that we were in just then got tore up by a windstorm last January. I was able to use frost bags and save all of the trees, and we're planning on repairing this uh, before the cold weather comes in again, so stay tuned. Uh, this is one of my latest little darlings that everybody has fell in love with. Super, super cold hardy. It's called a Carolina lime. I got it as a bud stick from a guy in Germany. And I want you to look at this. Look at all that juice. And look at their lime green. Wow. Look at their lime green. And uh, I would like for the cameraman to try it and see if he likes. Oh, I'm. If, if it gives good lime flavor. It's dripping. Oh my oh. gosh. <laughs> Big, big seeds. That's delicious. There's this, this survived the eight degree freeze. So if you folks want to try it, sure. Thank you. Okay. Only problem is a little seedy, but other than that, you get plenty of juice. As you can see, my hand is covered in juice right now. And you said it's super cold hardy. Super, it survived the eight degree freeze with no problem. And it's not a trifoliate hybrid, is it? It does have some trifoliate in it. Uh, it's kind of uh, well, put right here. Well, oh yeah, yeah. See, see just little, a little. Yeah, just a little, but it does have some trifoliate somewhere. But there's no after, no bitter aftertaste like you usually get. No, no. Did everybody get a taste of lime? Oh, it's <laughs> freaking amazing. Isn't that good, dude? <laughs> and, you said, and you said this is really popular right now? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I took it to the uh, Southeastern Citrus Expo in uh, Augusta. Yeah. And um, I think I won most unusual. Wow. This was the original grove. Some of them that you see like that right there, that's where the rootstock came back. And I took and grafted a trifle, I mean, I grafted a satsuma back onto the top of the rootstock. And we'll be back in production probably in next year or so. Wow. And these are some little young uh, seedless changshaws. Already producing fruit. Now these were planted, I think, after the freeze in 2019. And these are all satsumas? Uh, if it kind of has a weeping habit, it's a satsuma. If it's kind of upright, it's a seedless changshaw. But anyway, um, that's one of the survivors. I, I got to get back here and get all this stuff cleaned up. But that's so this is what we want to look at right here. This is one of my babies that survived the eight degree freeze. And as you can see, she's loaded up with fruit. Wow. Uh, this branch down here has got so much fruit to it, it's dragging the ground probably. 
Uh, these are uh, these are Satsuma. Yeah, that one's got a little bit of corky something on it, but yeah. It's loaded, and that survived it, huh? This is a survivor, and then there's another survivor up there. And you probably can't see them, but I come in here, and we go all the way back to that. Uh, bitter lemon bush back yonder. We've got other trees in, replanted in here, uh, trying to come along for the uh, for the future. Yeah. So we're not giving up. We're going on. Do you think that there was a difference between these these two mm. compared to the other ones, or was it just? I'm not sure what what the difference is. Uh, you will notice that both of these are right up against this uh, wood line here. Sure. They'll probably give a little bit of extra protection. Pretty well, all the ones out in there that we had perished with the freeze so I'd say probably having this little bit of shelter here helped some too so oh yeah I'll come try you some come get one guys yeah. go ahead and as you've always heard all your life the blacker the berry the sweeter the juice <laughs> true <laughs> <laughs> uh, you ever had muscadines before mm hmm mm. It's seedless. Oh, wait, no. No, no, it's got a few seeds. There are a couple. I think the turkeys and the, uh, see all that stuff down there? Mm -hmm. Turkeys and possums and all that stuff love it too, so. <laughs> and right while we're still filming, let me show you the world's biggest blueberry bush right over here. I think that, that was the corner that the 10 degree set, uh, 10 degree tangerine was right there. Was it this corner over here? Around there. Is that not the biggest blueberry bush you've ever seen? Oh my gosh. Oh wow. I that didn't even I didn't even know that was a blueberry bush. I was walking right up to it. That makes so many blueberries that we share crop with the mockingbirds. We let them have all they want to eat and we still have plenty. So Wow. Yeah. Go stand next to that, huh? I get a reference. That is that's that's twenty feet tall. That's crazy. I didn't know blueberries got that big. And let's look at the sandbow lemon while you're here. You get your ground here. Is that here too? Yeah, right here too. There's the citrus. Mm -hmm. Sandbow lemon. Sandbow lemon. And that made it in the 10 degree tangerine didn't. Right. But this one, what the reason you see so many dead branches and all, we had that uh, like 20 some degree freeze in like mid-April after everything had already started taking up uh, juice and everything and it, you know, kind of knocked it for a loop, but it's, it's going on anyway. So that's Sambo can lemon. Huh. Yep. Makes a big old lemon with a neck on it. Really? And then over here... This is a citrange. This is one of the first citrus trees I ever planted. So this one's probably, since you know I've been dabbling with citrus, this one's probably 30, getting close to 40 years old probably. Wow. I'm trying to see if I had any fruit on it, but I think the late freeze got all my fruit on this one. What variety of citrange is uh, it? I bought this from a man named Sherwood Aiken, who was one of the citrus pioneers way back before I was from Louisiana. And I've lost track of what it is. Wow. It doesn't have a lot of the, the trifoliate. Maybe it's because it's just older, but oh yeah, I see some on there. Oh, they're there. Yeah. They are there. And one more little interesting thing around here. Right in that corner right there, uh, that, little, that is a Changsha tangerine that has had no protection for the last 10 years or whatever. And it's under all these trees, so it doesn't grow a whole lot. But that took the eight degree freeze and laughed at it. I wow. I think it even lost any leaves. Wow. So, may try to graft some off of that one if it ever starts fruiting. That's your Changsha. It's blooming. 